Last time we conserved a revolver, but today we're going to recondition a Mauser. We've got Bob from RustBlue.com here, and Thanks, Bob Mark. is going to take you through it. Bob? Thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, we've got a, uh, an item here brought in by a customer. It's a, it's a typical uh, Yugo refurb K98K Mauser. Um, this one's been rebarreled by the Yugos. It's seen a lot of hard service, but it's in very good condition. And, and more importantly, it's got a mint bore. It's, it's a good shooter for the customer. Customer wants this gun brought back to armory fresh condition. So we're going to recondition this firearm. And, and uh, reconditioning, uh, as, as those of you who watched the 1916 Spanish video uh, that I did a few, few months back, uh, this gun is in a little more degraded shape. We've got a lot more bare metal on, on the bottom metal. Uh, we've got a receiver crest that's been scrubbed, and we're in bright metal there, and various other sundry parts that need uh, refurbishment and reconditioning. So what we're going to do here, we're going to... Uh, first, we're going to convert any existing surface rust on this weapon. Uh, then we're going to go through the steps to prepare it for the application of the rust blowing solution. Okay, Mark. Uh, I know you're not comfortable talking about the rusting process, so let me take over for a second and, and let me just do a little illustration of what we're doing when we're trying to induce controlled rust to get a good rust blue on a firearm. Now what you start out with, you've got your, your, metal, your base metal. This, this is right here, this is going to be our, our surface of the steel right here. And then we're going to apply some chemicals on top of that surface. And we're going to uh, expose those chemicals to moisture and heat in a certain way that's going to induce a controlled rust. And so what do I mean by a controlled rust? Um, I think everybody's been to a junkyard or a scrapyard and you've seen steel that's been laying out in the rain for years. And you have these, these large crusty cankers of rust all over everything. That's uncontrolled rust. It's been rained on, it's been hot, it's been cold. Uh, it's been in various concentrations of oxygen, so the rust is generally out of control. It's very deep, ugly, and <clears throat> you can't do much with it. On a firearm, that's not what we want. We want a microscopic layer of rust. and it, It's going to change the metal at, at just at the surface level and slightly below it. And you don't want it to penetrate deeply into the finish at all, but you want to get the benefit of the color and the corrosion protection of when you convert it in, into uh, ferroferrocytic iron or the magnetite or the rust blue. Now when you, once you apply these chemicals to the steel you let them rust under controlled conditions for a specific amount of time and after that a period of time you're going to get a reddish brown fine frog hair layer of rust on top. And sometimes it's so fine that you can't see it by looking straight on. You've got to kind of turn it at an angle to a light and then you can see it looks like it's been dusted with cinnamon and that's what you want so so uh, uh, once that's done then that rust is then treated with either boiling distilled water or steam to do the chemical conversion it'll convert that microscopic layer of rust into magnetite or rust blue and that's what we want so what's in that what's in that green stuff what's in that chemical well uh, chemists back in the 1800s and early 1900s but had it pretty much figured out that what you've got to you got to have several components to a good rust blue one you got to have an acid and and everybody's you know if you've been to high school you've been exposed to chem class and, and you, you've dealt with hydrochloric acid nitric acid sulfuric acid and so forth each of these acids are good they have their uh, place but the very the very best acid for rust blowing <clears throat> and the one that's most active on iron is nitric acid. Nitric acid uh, is very good because it, it, it's not extremely aggressive but it has a it has a very fine level effect on iron and it it it, it, it micro pits the surface and this micro pitting what it does it creates more surface area. Surface area is what you want. 
because that gets more chemical penetration and stickiness to the metal. Nitric is also good because it does not have to be neutralized after you use it. Unlike all the other acids, uh, especially hydrochloric acid, if you rust blow a fireman hydrochloric acid, you have, to, you have to put it in a boiling bath of lye for an hour or two just to neutralize it. Otherwise, the fireman will continue to rust even after you stop. The next thing that they, they found out they needed was a salt, some form of salt. And uh, common salts at the time were, uh, that you find every day are like copper sulfate, Uh, some even used a uh, uh, ammonium chloride and so forth. Anything that was was, was general, and, and some of the sulfates they were used. The predominant one used was really was was copper sulfate. Oh, and I almost forgot uh, good old ferric chloride. Ferric chloride and also merc mercuric chloride in the older form is used a mercury compound. Mer mercuric uh, chloride was probably the most active uh, of all the salts. Now, however, uh, it's very dangerous. The, the, the neurotoxic uh, effects of mercuric chloride are well known, uh, not used today. For ferric chloride and copper sulfate are probably the most predominant. Ferric chloride, you might be uh, might note, is, is used a lot to etch circuit boards. So it, it all has the properties of acids and salts. So by putting these together with water as, as a medium and sometimes ethyl alcohol, as a as kind of a, a spreader sticker medium, you can, you can spread ultra thin layers of this on the metal and induce rusting in a very fast amount of time. And when you do this under controlled conditions, you, uh, you then create a very fine layer of rust versus a very coarse layer of rust. And this creates a, a, a substrate that you can then uh, uh, expose to heat and moisture and convert to rust blue. The, the first uh, item of business with uh, uh, rust blowing is, is to first make sure that your, your, your piece of metal is rust free. Uh, in this case, this, this trigger guard off this K98K Mauser is rust free. It, it just has a lot of wear as you can see here on the trigger guard bow and in the Ford Tang portion. So what we're going to do here now is the second step in there and then we got to clean this up and get the, any residual oil off of the metal. Now, my, my favorite uh, solvent of choice for this is naphtha. This is available at your local hardware store or paint store. I just use like a one and a half or two inch uh, bristle brush, dip it in some naphtha, and then just start working your way around the piece, inside and out, up in every little corner, every pinhole, every crevice. Make sure you get a good dose of naphtha. And uh, I also like to have a piece of newspaper under here for absorbency so the runoff will get picked up. You can also do this in a plastic pan or an a, a aluminum pan to catch the runoff, but in this case we're just, we're just going to show you how to do one piece. And you'll use your imagination to, to uh, do the rest of this rifle. But today we're just going to do this to show you. And this is just very simple cleanup. Do that, and then I take some paper toweling and I wipe that off. Wipe that off. Make sure I get any residual oil out of there. And then I'll go over it one more time with the naphtha. Do the second brushing. This piece is not too greasy, so I'm not really worried about it too much. But your, 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 uh, your uh, results may vary. You may have a very greasy Cosmolini uh, rifle or, or handgun. and. Sometimes they're so caked with uh, lubricant that you have to take a, uh, a knife or a popsicle stick or a scraper to get it off in big pieces and get yourself down to a manageable amount of it. But in this case, this, this is in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy and pleased with that. So we're going to get that naphtha off. 
And then I'm going to go to a solvent that's got a little bit of water in it. And what this will do, this will, uh, since oil is lighter than water, uh, this particular solvent is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Now that's available at your, uh, at your drug stores locally. And you get all this naphtha out of it. And then I basically just like to take the isopropyl and just flood it. Let me get it a little different angle there. I'll flood this alcohol all over it. And that'll wash out any residual oils and float them off. There we go. And I think that just about did it. You get your paper towel and you wipe that off. And in just a few minutes that'll air dry. And you'll have a nice clean piece of metal now that we can proceed on to the initial application of the bluing solution. Okay, as I was cleaning this uh, trigger guard bow up, I did notice that we have a little bit of rust here and a little bit right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a spot steam here to convert that rust and then card it prior to putting on the bluing solution. So what I've got here to do that with is a, a closed handheld clothing steamer and you just cut that on and you put put the metal right in the live steam I'm just going to use this as my third hand to hold that and we're going to let that steam for oh about five minutes okay folks we've had about ten minutes now in the steam and this area right here right around those uh, capture screw hole had some rust on it and as you can see that rusty color has now turned kind of a muddy dark brown and, that, and blackish color and that means that that rust has been converted. So what I'm going to do now is just take a, a fine wire brush and we're going we're gonna to card that manually right here. And there you go. What's, what was once rusty is now black. And we'll proceed now through the, the bluing process and we'll blend all that in with the new finish. I have all of this high speed equipment here, but I can't seem to find Bob anywhere to talk about it. Do you know where Bob is? I haven't seen Bob, have you? Well, since we're making things rust, what we need to have is an environment that we can control. One of the things Springfield Armory figured out back in the day was they had all the steam to run their main steam engine and run all of their equipment. So that's our heat source. Our equipment is not, we don't, this isn't the stuff I use day to day. This is the stuff we're trying to demonstrate to you that you can do a full on nice rust blue job for not a whole lot of money. We showed you this stuff before. This is the same cardboard box that Bob has been steaming gear in since 1985, okay? It's just a cardboard wardrobe box. It's got its cardboard hanger in it. He's cut the front open so that you have access and you can play with things in it. In the bottom, can we see that? There's a flap down here that he's cut. And that flap is where this Wally World cube heater or this... Wally World Steamer Gizmo is put in the chute. So when we want to warm up the parts to get them up above dew point, we put the heat in. Then, once we got everything hot, we go ahead and turn the, the, the steamer on and stick it in that hole and close the thing behind it. And all the parts that are sitting in here will just cook and ripen and get that nice frog hair on them. When it comes time to steam stuff, do a slight pan over here. This is about an eight or a $9 pot. You don't need an expensive one. Take a regulation lid. Hang on a minute, let me take the top off so I don't drop it because it looks like somebody has dropped it lately. Take the lid, poke some holes in it. This is a toilet flange from a hardware store. That's a plastic toilet flange that's been screwed to this lid. This is a piece of uh, PVC pipe that sits down over the top of this pot right here. And this is not that cord PVC. This is solid, right? It is cord? It's what? Okay, it's cellular core PVC. It's not that bad. 
this sits up on top of that pot and you only got to put about that much water in it you don't need to boil four five six gallons of water to do this all you're doing is making steam now keep an eyeball on it you don't want to run or dry you don't need this burner ring this can be done on a stove with a smaller rig guys this is like about twenty dollars worth of gear the steamer your wife's probably got for her dresses and if not get her one but don't get it as a gift never get a woman something with a cord sticking out of it as a gift don't do that it's a tool buy her a tool buy her flowers there are no wires sticking out of flowers the heater can be got anywhere this stuff is just common it's generic the soaps we use everything we use is generic for doing this process now in a batch bluing setup i'm using significantly more uh um, sophisticated equipment but that's not the point that's not what i'm trying to get across here do the maintenance okay what i've done now i, I, I already coated the steel with some rust blowing solution let that dry coated it again put it here in the box close the lid and I inserted our little little uh, clothing steamer in there, closed the door, and I've let it run for about uh, 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so it's already done. I'm going to pull this out, cut it off, open the box, and tuck out the piece. And you can see, you can see the rust that's already formed. That's the rust. That's what you want, that powdery, reddish-brown, fox-brown rust. Next step is to take it and to convert it, either in the steam pipe or boiling water. Okay, here we are now with just a pot of plain boiling water. We're going to immerse this trigger guard in it, and we're going to let that work for about 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll come back to it. We're going to pull it out of the water now after about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. It does You can't do it too long, but I do it at least 10 minutes. So we're going to pull it out here. You're going to let this dry off, and I want you to get a shot. You make sure that's in focus. This is the surface that you're going to see, this muddy, brown, blackish surface. That's the loose oxide that needs to be carted off or scratched off. And I'm just going to take a, take a fine bristle brush, right there, and we're going, to, we're going to rub that off. And there you see you got a nice gray color already starting. That's with one coat. It's already about uh, oh, eight or ten shades darker than it started out. One more coat and that should be done. All right, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is just demonstrate how you use this steam pipe for, the, for these long pieces of steel that you're going to be, be bluing. So frequently as collectors we pick up, you know, we strip down, we get to a barreled action. Uh, not many of us are able to have tanks and pipe burners and the gas to, to run them. We can, however, use easily available cheap items from the, uh, from the hardware store and build an inexpensive pipe steamer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this steamer off the, off the pot, it's boiling, and I'm going to remove the cap, and, the, and this is my little crossbar here, and we're going to put this, uh, put the barrel, if I was a little taller it would be easier. Put the barrel in there, hang it. I, all I've got is a clothes hanger that's been straightened. It goes th go through the muzzle and out the breech because the, most of the steel is in the bottom. You want that closest to the steam. Okay, recap it. Protect your hands. Pipe back on there. And bring it back up to steam. Ten minutes. Hey, I'm back in here because I'm on this side of the bench real quick. After we're done... We harden our parts off in kerosene after we're done rust bluing. What this does is there's still moisture inside this layer of bluing that has to be driven out. Now, you can do this with just regular Mark I Mod Zero mineral oil. Just go spend two bucks, buy a bottle of mineral oil and do it. You do not need dipping vats. You do not need tubs full of kerosene. Do not use gasoline for this. The stuff evaporates. It creates an explosive vapor in your shop. And some guy will come in with a lit cigar and ho-hoo-fa, and off she goes, right? So if you don't want to ho-hoo-fa your shop, don't use gasoline. Who cares if it's carcinogenic? But you can use a mineral oil, you can use kerosene, and then we're all done. You can, you can put a layer of wax over this. Don't use gun oil at this point in the game. You've just spent all day trying to get this layer of rust on this thing, and if you use gun oil, it'll come right off in your hands. So don't do that for two to three days. 
tarot it down, put a little bit of mineral oil on it. When you're all done, come, up, come, and come back, and you wind up with this beautiful rust blue. Now, I know we only showed you one part tracking. You, you'll get, the, you'll get, we'll catch up the rest of the gun here in a little bit. But for right now, we just wanted to track this one part because it's a little bit time intensive. We're under a bit of a crush. We did three videos today, and I'm out of time. So this is where we're gonna, this is where we're gonna wind up right here. Okay, guys, we uh, covered a lot of ground today. Uh, I'm gonna try to reel it back in and just, just go over the high points. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, you know cleanliness being next to godliness. That you need to get this weapon clean to begin with. You need to prepare the surface for the bluing solution if you're going to do a if you're going to do a traditional rust blue or a, a recondition as we did for the Mauser. And and again we're going to sh we're going to show you the rest of that gun in a later episode. Um, uh, if you've got a you know, collectible, you really want to do the preservation and the uh, his historical conservation, conservation yeah. for that gun. Well, remember guys, do the maintenance. The internet is allowing us to talk to each other like four generations of men before us couldn't. So spread the information around, but you got to do the maintenance or else these relics are just going to decay, turn into piles of rust, and then we haven't saved anything for anyone. So once again, it's been a pleasure. Bob, thanks for coming down. I really appreciate that. Got it, Mark. And we're out of here. See ya.